Insecurity is an extremely expensive habit. In this video, we're gonna talk about the true cost of insecurity and how you are spending money and resources on insecurity when you could be using them in more efficient and beneficial ways for your life. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive on in. Hey Soul Surfers, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here and have not yet subscribed, go ahead and do that by clicking the subscribe button. You can also click the notification bell if you would like to be notified when new videos are posted. Today we're talking about the cost of insecurity and of being insecure. I just had a recent epiphany about how much insecurity really costs, and not just financially either. Although it is interesting to see how insecurity is impacting us financially. So what is the true cost of insecurity? On an emotional level, insecurity is costing us our happiness. Because where insecurity comes from is comparison. The reason we feel insecure is because we are taking ourselves and comparing ourselves to what we see in others. And I say it that way because a lot of times the things that we are seeing from others are not always the truth, especially in this age of social media where everything is portrayed to be happy-go-lucky and we only see the parts of people's lives that they want to share. In fact, society encourages us to compare ourselves to each other and that's why social media is its pretty much a mask. A lot of times people, like I said, just show the parts that they want people to see. And these are the parts that society deems as making us valuable, such as all the happy parts of our lives, all of these successful parts of our lives, any awards we've won because that makes us more valuable and have meaning. When we compare ourselves to other people and we look at how well we think everyone's doing based on what they're showing the world, that makes us feel insecure. We allow ourselves to feel insecure based on these comparisons. And when we make these comparisons and we see for ourselves that we're not where somebody else is, that gives us a reason to criticize ourselves or push ourselves harder because we are not doing enough. Basically, we're placing our value and our worthiness based on someone else's level of success or how we are perceiving their success. Now society has its own way of perceiving success and a lot of times we're looking through those goggles when we are comparing our success, our joy, our happiness and our lives to other people. So the way to break free from this insecurity is to stop comparing yourself. The only person that you really need to compare yourself to is yourself. In fact, I don't even know if you need to compare yourself to yourself because all we really need to do is be in the present moment. If you don't like the way things are in your life right now, you have the power to change them. You have the power to make a difference and change the trajectory of your life. So if there is really a comparison of self with self, it would be for me, in my mind, more of looking at where you are now and then as you move forward, seeing if you've made progress toward what you really ultimately want in life what you authentically want in life, not what anyone says you should want or should do or should have. And at certain stages of your life, but at certain age, we gauge everything by age milestones. You know, if, if you're not married by age 40, then there's something wrong with you. Not true, by the way, that's not true. These are the things that society has placed on us to make us believe that we have to hit these milestones in order to have worth, value, or show our success in life. And by setting these milestones and these timelines that are completely meaningless, we keep ourselves insecure when we don't meet those timelines. And in fact, by placing timelines on things, we are automatically setting ourselves up for potential failure. Because as those timelines come closer, if we're not where we think we should be, then we start putting pressure on ourselves and starting to feel unworthy or that we're not good enough or there's something wrong with us for not meeting this timeline. And this just reinforces our insecurity, which steals our joy, which steals our happiness. So remaining insecure is costing you your happiness. 
Insecurity is costing you your happiness in other ways too because by being insecure with how you look or with the amount of money that you're making or any other part of your life, essentially what you're saying is that in order for me to be happy, I have to have these things. I have to look this way. I have to make this amount of money when really you can be happy where you are right now. The only reason that there's a lack of happiness is because we think we have to be these things in order to be happy. And really, it's just not the truth. Aside from costing you your happiness, insecurity also costs you money. And we see this all around us in the products that are on the market, the new things that people are trying to sell us. And one of the biggest markets that I see this insecurity play out in is health and beauty and weight loss and diet and so all of those things basically outward appearance of course it costs money to buy all of these products to meet society standards of beauty and appearance and weight and body image and all of these things we buy different anti-aging products because we are not supposed to look old wrinkles are bad they're a sign that we're getting old and youth is really the only thing that's cherished and valued in the world societally right now everyone wants to hold on to that youth in a physical appearance we also spend a lot of money on diet products because we don't like how we we look and how our weight is we're buying new products that cover up our imperfections uh, such as different types of makeup concealers things like that, hiding, basically hiding our imperfections when really it's important to embrace them. Another way that insecurity costs us financially is because most of us are investing in self-hate rather than self-love. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, beauty products and things like this are wonderful and I don't shame anybody for using them because they're a nice way to help you feel good. But really looking at the why are you using these things? Are you using them because society says you have to look a certain way? Or is it because you already feel good and you just want to you know, enhance that feeling of feeling good? So really what it comes to for me is a form of escapism. Am I using these things to hide something about myself? Is it coming from a place of inadequacy? Or is it coming from a place of security and feeling good and just wanting to amplify that feeling in my outward appearance. A big eye opener for me in terms of costliness financially with regard to investing in self-hate versus self-love and loving myself was in the things that I was using to escape myself. For example, food. It is so much more expensive to sit around and eat and eat and eat and eat instead of invest the time in myself to heal my emotional issues and underlying core beliefs about myself, about my worthiness. Once I started healing my emotional issues and my core beliefs about myself, I find that I don't need to eat as much. And in fact, I can take the money I was spending on the cheap foods because they were cheap and usually the cheap foods are processed and not the most nutritious for us. The money that I'm saving because I need to eat less, I can take and invest in healthy foods, which I actually crave more now because the processed foods were just things that I was using as a hit to feel better, to feel better. Just that temporary kind of high feeling. Whereas now I crave fruits and vegetables and lean proteins and things like that, that nourish my body. And so even now transitioning the way that I eat with healthy foods and whole foods, even though dollar for dollar those may cost more, I'm actually saving money in the long run because I don't need to eat as much. I'm not running from myself. I'm loving myself. I'm loving my body. And naturally, that is saving me money by investing in the right things, investing in that self-love. Another realization for me is when I started looking at my core beliefs and my emotional issues, I resolved to stop using substances 
that were keeping me from feeling my feelings and numbing myself. So what I did is I decided to stop drinking alcohol and I haven't drank alcohol for almost a year now and it feels really good first of all. But when I look back at how much money I was spending on drinking in order to run from myself and avoid myself and avoid the reality that was around me and how much I was not enjoying or loving my life or myself, it was just wild to see how much money I was spending on that and that behavior and that habit when I could be using it to do other things. There were things that I was denying myself that were healthier choices, but I didn't want to do them because I didn't feel worthy or deserving. And I would, you know, basically talk myself out of it and say, it's too expensive. It's too expensive for me to join this personal development course. Personal development courses can run all sorts of different ranges of prices, but I would talk myself out of that, yet be able to go to the bar and easily drop, you know, like $100 in a weekend or on a day or something. It, it's just wild to look and see how much money I was spending on unhealthy behaviors. So what I really recommend for you to do is to take a look at any part of your life where you feel that you are exhibiting an unhealthy behavior and see what it's costing you. What is it costing you financially? What is it costing you in your mental health and mental well being? Society wants us to stay insecure because the more insecure we are, the more control they have over us, the more fear that is instilled in our body that if we don't meet society's standards, we won't be happy. But the truth of the matter is that once we are happy, all of that stuff doesn't matter. And we can really invest in ourselves emotionally and financially doing the things that we love and not things that we think we should be doing to meet society's expectations. All right, Soul Surfers, I'd really love for you to take time to think about this. Go through your life right now and look at the things that you are spending your money on, your financial abundance on, and also your emotional well-being on. What things in your life are you unhappy with? Is there a way that you're investing in your self-hate instead of your self-love, both financially and emotionally? This exercise is going to be so eye-opening and beneficial for you and you can see that you will be able to reallocate your resources into happiness and emotional fulfillment and you won't have to spend money or any more energy on hating yourself. Self-love is so transformational and when you realize just how worthy you are of your own joy and your own happiness and that you can give that to yourself, it doesn't depend on anything outside of you, anybody's opinion, anybody's belief, anybody's milestone, you're going to see the world transform. You're going to see your life just explode with joy, happiness, and everything you ever imagined. Thanks so much for joining me. If you liked what you saw in this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.